present Coral Brown and Michael Horden in The Leader of the House by Nigel Balchin. The play is set at number 10 Downing Street. The time is any time but the present. The Leader of the House. It is at this moment, at this moment, when the eyes of the world are upon us, that the opposition chooses to put forward a case founded on uh, <clears throat> hearsay and prejudice, and to foster abroad the impression that there is a division of opinion in this country. Uh. Oh! Miss Parks, it doesn't work. It works all right this morning, Prime Minister. Well, it doesn't work now. When I try to play back what I've said, it merely hisses. I don't expect it to cheer, but I don't see why it should hiss. May I see? Testing? Testing? Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the party. Testing? Testing? Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the party. Ah. Huh. There you are. Perhaps you weren't pressing the button. I certainly was. Every time I stopped, I pressed the button. But you ought to press it when you talk and stop pressing it when you stop. Exactly what I was doing. No, now let's get on. <sighs> Engagements and press, please. I'll fetch them. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a nigger <clears throat> by his toe. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a nigger <clears throat> by his toe. <laughs> good, good. Now, Miss Parks, engagements? 11.30, permanent secretary to the Treasury. 12 noon, home secretary. Lunch with the worshipful company of wire pullers. Mm, wire drawers, Miss Parks. Wire drawers. Wire drawers. Uh, 2.30, chair subcommittee of defence. Mm. 3.30, the Bulgarian ambassador. And the president and secretary of the Society for the Preservation of Ancient Monuments together? Well, no, but you wanted to have something which would unavoidably detain you when the ambassador comes, so I put the others in. My dear Miss Parks, will you never learn? It is true that for the moment I do not want to see the Bulgarian ambassador. To do so might split the party from top to bottom, but I can't possibly be unavoidably detained by the Society for the Preservation of Ancient Monuments. It would be an insult. <sighs> what else have we? Well, that's the dock strike. Ah, better, but I should have preferred something a trifle less... Uh, Hackney. Housing? No, oh, it had better be the financial crisis. Ring up the Chancellor of the Exchequer and ask him if he'd like to come along. But there isn't a financial crisis. Nonsense, there's always a financial crisis. Make it the Chancellor, Miss Parks, and go on. 4.30. Tea? No. Oh. The Chief Whip in the party office. 5.30, the Marquis of Newbury. 6, the CIGA. What about 5.45? Still with the Marquis. Absurd. He's only coming to give me his views about Central Europe. 5.45 tea. Go on. Seven, dine here, Minister for War, CIGS, First Lord. In heaven's name, why the First Lord? He's winding up the censure debate next week. But the censure debate was last Monday. That was the other one. You mean there's another next week? Yes. This is absurd. Ring up the leader of the opposition and say, I won't have it. We, we let him move one vote of censure last Monday. There's no earthly point in another now. We haven't done anything since last Monday, anyhow. Well, it isn't Mr. Percival's fault. He mm. rang up and said he was very sorry, but his executive insisted. If we have any more of this nonsense, I shall allow one of his votes of censure to be carried and resign. Let him form a government. <laughs> That'll teach him. Is that all? Yes, except for routine. And, uh, 10.30 uh, <coughs> to 11? Still open? Well, there's nothing actually fixed. But there's the Minister of Labour and Lady Pease and the Friends of Persia and the Postmaster General and the Shah of Peruvia, if you've any time. I haven't. Tell George to deal with them. Oh, now the press. Ring for Simmons. Uh, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, I, uh, I want you to send out for a gardenia. A gardenia? Yes. One? Yes. With a, a, a little spray of... Stuff, you know, buttonhole. Very well. Good morning, Prime Minister. Morning, Simmons. Well, anything important? Uh, nothing much. Uh, leaders all on Bulgaria or the dock strike. Full page manifesto by Lord Pine on the front page of the Clarion. Saying? Well, I haven't quite grasped it, frankly, sir. The common market, I think. Would you care to read it? Heaven forbid. What else? Uh, the party chairman has made another unfortunate speech, sir. Not about birth control again. No, sir, about beer. Oh. He said a glass of beer never did anyone any harm. 
and the independent order of the totalers have just rung up to ask if he was expressing the view of the government. Now, that man must be more careful. Why can't he realise that outside the party, people take him seriously? Anything else? Article in Hooray saying you uh, cheated golf. Ignore. <clears throat> yes. Uh, gossip column, What I Hear in the Mercury, says you're secretly engaged to Carol Lindsay. I'm what? Engaged to Carol Lindsay, <laughs> actress. But... This is monstrous. Deny it. Uh, deny it? Certainly. Uh, Threaten proceedings if an apology isn't published at once. Sir. Now, what is it, Miss Park? Uh, the secretary of the League of Homemakers says she has an appointment. Uh, oh, oh, yes. That, that's, that's quite right. I, I did promise her a few minutes this morning. I have no note of it. Uh, no, you wouldn't have. But uh, I remember I told her I would see her in that, uh, uh, that odd half hour. Uh, we have kept from uh, now till 11 free, haven't we? Well, there, oh, there. Never mind. I'll, I'll see her. I'll see her. I'll show you. <laughs> Very well, sir. A deal with that scurrilous article, Simmons. Uh, very well, sir. Mrs. Roberts. How do you do, madam? Please sit down. Thank you, Miss Parks. Carol, my dear. Put up your veil. Oh, my dear, you look... Radiant, James. I always look radiant when I get married. My darling. Mm. Is everything all right? Ah, yes. But uh, there's been a leak. One rag's already said we're engaged. I've given instructions for a most emphatic denial to be issued at once. Denial? But why? I mean, in an hour's time... My dear you... Carol, a public man simply cannot afford to have his actions forecast by the press. But never mind that. We ought to leave in about... Uh, Five minutes. Now, let me see. What do I want? Ring. Yes. License. Yes. James, dear, are you quite sure about this? Sure you want me? Yes, Carol. Are you quite sure your public will like it? Will yours? Oh, mine will love it. In my profession, if you start getting married, you'd better carry on. Otherwise, it's so dull for everybody. But I'd hate to be the woman for whom a great man gave up all. Carol, please understand, I am not a great man. Oh, but... I am Prime Minister simply because if I were not, the Foreign Secretary or the Lord President would be. They both realised that for the other to be Prime Minister would be a national catastrophe, so they put up with me. I wonder if I ought to let you do it. My dear, the boot's on the other leg. I wonder if I ought to let you do it. I no longer have youth or good looks. My work leaves little time for companionship. I earn less than the latest pop star, and I'm liable to suffer long periods of unemployment. Shabby genteel retirement with a title that I can't afford is all the future I can offer you. Darling, I'd rather be a peeress with a man I love than marry the biggest trade union's boss in England. Darling Carol. Now, I don't want to hurry you, my dear, but if we don't go now, the whole thing will be rather, uh, rather a rush. I'm ready. Good. Then we'll get along. Sir? Uh, Miss Parks, I'm going out. I shall return in half an hour or so. Out? Yes. But, but nothing's arranged. Exactly. So why shouldn't I go out? But Heppelwhite isn't here. Heppelwhite? What on earth is Heppelwhite? Your new detective. He's gone out for a cup of coffee. Oh, my dear girl, you can't expect me to arrange my movements to fit in with my detective's coffee drinking. In any case, I don't want a detective. He'll probably lose his job if you go out without him. True. Where's he gone? He usually goes to that place round the corner, Sherrard. Oh, yeah, well, well, <clears throat> never mind. I might drop in there on my way back and pick him up. Uh, now, we really must go. Where's he off to in such a hurry? It's no good asking me. I'm only his personal private secretary. He wouldn't tell me a thing like that. Uh, Fleet Street says there's going to be a new Bulgarian ambassador for reasons of health. The other caught pneumonia in the waiting room, I suppose. <laughs> Roderick... I've seen that woman with the PM before somewhere. Who is she? I couldn't see her face. No. No, but I know her voice. And her walk. The theatrical garden party. Yeah. What? I think she's an actress. Good heavens. Carol Lindsay. Yes, yes, that's it. But good Lord, there was a patter in the press saying he was going to marry her. Marry her? Yes. And what's more, he made me deny it. He made me keep this time open. And this morning he wanted a gardenia. But he'd never choose a woman like that. She's been married three times already. It would break him. Break him? And you think that would stop J.R. if he really got an idea in his head? I'm going to see if they know anything about it down below. Yeah, oh, uh, good morning, Miss Rice. Oh, good morning. Miss Parks, where's my brother? Uh, he's gone out for a few minutes, Miss Rice. Out? Where? Uh, I, I don't know. I thought it was the business of a personal private secretary to know her employer's whereabouts. Will you see that he gets these papers? 
Point out to him that there's been a further fall in manpower in the mines. Uh, very good, Miss Wright. You might add that with practically every miner in the country in the House of Commons, this is only to be expected. People can't be in two places at once. Yes, Miss Rice. Thank you. Uh, they've gone off in a cab and Clark heard him say something about a registry office. Who's gone off to a registry office? Oh, uh, the uh, uh, Prime Minister, madam. Registry office? What for? What is this nonsense? <clears throat> Miss Rice, there is reason to believe that your brother may have... Uh, Gone uh, to get married. Married? To whom? We don't really know. Uh, but there was a rumour that he was engaged to um, um, Miss Carol Lindsay and... Uh, Carol Lindsay? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the actress. And, and she came here and, and he wanted a guardian here and they both went off to a registry office. And well, I, Go I, and find I, out which registry office. Uh, yes. Miss Parks, get on the telephone and make inquiries. He must be found at once. Uh, hello, the Prime Minister's personal private secretary. Yes? Uh, what? It's the megaphone. They say the Prime Minister is just marrying Carol Lindsay at Pear Street Registry Office and wants to know if we'll make a statement. Tell them that there is no statement. We have nothing to say at the moment. There's no doubt about it, Miss Rice. Dozens of press calls coming through. The Chancellor, the First Lord, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Minister for Mines and the Foreign Secretary are here. And the Party Office, the Lord President, the Home Secretary, the Secretary for Scotland, the Lord Privy Seal and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster are on their way. Does the public know? Well, there, there, there's a crowd of several thousand outside and, and, and nearly a hundred pressmen and, and, and several television cameras. They might be waiting for something else, of course. Miss I... Parks, you will admit ministers as they arrive. Very well. Miss Mr. Rice. Simmons, you will issue a handout to the press. Yeah, oh, well, I, I'm afraid there isn't an actual handout ready, Miss Rice. There's, oh, it's, oh, well, it's all been a, a, a little sudden. An efficient press secretary keeps a stock of handouts suitable for any emergency. Uh, yes. If you have neglected to do so, you had better go and mingle with the crowd and raise cheers of, of moderate but not excessive warmth whenever they seem politically desirable. Uh, very good, Miss Rice. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Foreign Secretary, and the First Lord of the Admiralty, Miss Rice. Look here, Frida. What the hell's all this? All what, Mr. Bumfrey? About James and this woman. Oh, you've heard a most disturbing rumour. Is the Prime Minister getting married? Yes. To Miss Lindsay's actress? Yes. Thank you. That is all I wish to know. Well, it isn't all I want to know. Uh, you see, Miss Rice, we are all rather disturbed. Why wasn't I told? Presumably because my brother didn't consider that it was a foreign office matter. Oh, well, yes, all but, uh, the Treasury approval was necessary. The Minister of Agriculture and the Minister for Mines. Is it true? Yes, it is. Oh, well, the farmers won't like it. The miners will come out. Now, listen, Frida. I've been in this movement all my life. I fought and struggled, and I... Uh... Mr. Bumphrey, please remember that this is not the United Nations. You must give our colleague, Mr. Rice, uh, this um, uh, uh, forcefulness so easily becomes a habit. But I must point out that whilst I yield to no man in my loyalty <coughs> to our leader, his value politically has always depended upon his extreme uh, <coughs> trustworthiness, his reliability, the fact that he was a safe man. Well... It is scarcely the action of a safe man to marry uh, <laughs> Miss Lindsay. Clearly damage, possibly irreparable damage, has been done. Look, Frida, we've got the housing situation and the coal situation and the food situation and the Vulgarian situation and the Naval Treaty and the Backbenchers Committee and Ireland and the budget and the party chairman. Isn't that enough without having James go and do this? The Lord President of the Council. Good morning, Miss Rice. Good morning, gentlemen. Dive. This is a pleasant little surprise for all of us. Pleasant. The miners will come out. The farmers won't like it. It will almost certainly bring the government down. I fail to see why my brother's marriage should be a political issue. Well, for heaven's sake, have you never heard of the Methodist conscience? Well, the Catholics. The Women's Liberation Front. The Presbyterian vote. The miners. The farmers. Now, 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 wait a minute, gentlemen. Aren't we being a little unfair? After all, in the past, some of us have felt that there was a certain lack of uh, decisiveness at the top. We can hardly complain when the Prime Minister does something not only decisive, but probably final. <laughs> It'll be final, all right. And why not? Any man has the right to step out of political life, if he wants to. Now, listen. If you think you're going to take advantage of this mess to make James resign so that you... The can... gentleman! I beg your pardon, Miss Rice, but the head of the party office is here. He appears to... Hello, the... Ainsbury. What's happening? Oh, they're coming. Listen. Oh, good Lord. And there's she, made up to the eyebrows, looking like something out of a review. 
Oh, what have I done to deserve this? Here have I been, building him up, starting from nothing, mind you, building him up for years as a safe man, a level-headed man, the man you can trust. Rice is plain but wholesome. And there he is, down below, married to Carol Lindsay. And she telling the newspapers that he's the nicest husband she's had for a long time. Oh, it's not fair. It's not just. <laughs> Maybe I haven't always been a good man, but th th there was no call to punish me like this. <laughs> Here they are. <coughs> Why, hello. Quite a party. Carol, dear, these are some of my colleagues. Gentlemen, may I present my wife. Still lots of very good notices for the wedding, Miss Rice. Indeed. There's a rather leggy picture of me in the clarion. Oh, but then the clarion's like that. Oh, I do believe it's one I gave Boodle's Pine about 15 years ago. Indeed. Uh, I think you may like to know that I've told the Prime Minister that my apartments here will be at his disposal after this week. What? You're going? Naturally. Now, why? I have lived here only to act as my brother's hostess. Now he's married, I shall be relieved of the responsibility. Oh, but, but you like it here. It's not advisable to grow fond of this house. A disinclination to leave it has been responsible for a number of coalitions and other national calamities. But will you be happy away from all this? In my family, the pursuit of happiness has not always been the guiding principle. Um, I don't know anything about politics, but in my profession, we don't walk out because we think things may be a bit difficult, or particularly when we've got a first-rate press. Have you looked at these cuttings? The press is not the public. Some sections, I agree, have been surprisingly moderate, but the clarion, for example. Oh. <laughs> but that's only Boodle's pine. And he's only cross because he made a proposal to me himself and I turned him down. Lord Pine proposed to marry you? Oh, no. Uh, no, he didn't exactly propose to marry me. Oh, that was rather the point. You know how men are about these things. My experience of men has been mainly political. Anyhow, all the rest are friendly enough. Am I to assume that the proprietors of all the other newspapers have made proposals to you and have been accepted? <laughs> no, no. It's just that they know that the whole thing's news. If you'd said that it was a subject for vulgar gossip, I should have agreed. Well, there's a lot to be said for gossip. Have you ever worked out how much Space James, no, not politics, but James was getting before he married me? And how much he's getting now? The Prime Minister does not need cheap advertisement. Why not? He's got to sell himself, hasn't he? And he doesn't know how. All he needs is decent direction and a good agent. Well, with what you know and what I can do, well, we ought to be able to do something for James. If you stay. Well, it is possible, just possible, that there's something in what you say. The unusual in politics is normally disastrous. But there have been exceptions. What can you do? Sing, dance, swim, horse, fence, French, Italian, American, Scottish, Irish, Cockney. Admirable in themselves, but having little application to political life. Can you speak in public? Well, <laughs> I have rather. I, I can open bazaars and so on. You have married the Prime Minister, not the mayor of a small provincial town. Well, whether I can speak in public or not, James certainly can't. I went to hear him once at the house and it was terrible. No one could hear him beyond the first three rows of the stall. He's always avoided the tub-thumping style. Oh, I don't want to make him into a ham. But they must be able to hear him. Now, mustn't they? Well, audibility is not always an asset in a political speaker. But I must confess that I, I see no harm in James being audible occasionally as long as the subject matter for the audible passages is selected with proper care. And he must learn to make a decent entrance. The next time I saw him, he, well, he sort of slunk in, as though he was afraid he might wake somebody. Yes, I agree that that is an unfortunate mannerism. At the last party conference, I heard somebody compare the Prime Minister's entrance to that of a slightly alarmed burglar. <laughs> well, leave it to me. They're all things that can be put right in half a dozen lessons. 
And then in the meantime, you could be putting me into the picture about politics. I don't really approve of women in political life. Uh, particularly attractive women. They tend to confuse issues that are usually quite confused enough already. Oh, I don't want to, want to take any part in it. But, you see, I must know what it's all about. Well, otherwise, I may drop the most awful bricks. I mean, I remember James told me once that the Lord Privy Seal isn't really a lord or a privy or a seal. Now, what I need is just the, uh, well, the elementary stuff. Yes, well, let me see. Are you interested in the theory of government or in what actually takes place? Now, I'm interested in whether when some particular character comes in, I rush up to him and say, hello there, or whether I just say, good morning. Well, that, of course, may vary with the needs of the political situation. But broadly speaking, unless there's imminent danger of a coalition, members of the opposition parties would never be addressed as hello there. Uh, I think we'd better begin with the basic machinery of government. Fine. Go ahead. The political machinery of this country, as you know, is based upon the party system. There's the Conservative Party, represented mainly, though not exclusively, by those who have something to conserve. And there is the Labour, or Socialist Party, represented by those who support the claims of Labour or Socialism, but seldom both. Uh, there is also a Liberal Party. But I, I don't want to confuse you at this stage with too many small details. Me, 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 me. Now, you ought to be able to feel it tickling up here. Then you're getting resonance. Now, you try. Now let go. And you'll find your voice is right forward against your hard palate. So it is. Yes, darling, but you're forgetting to breathe. Now remember what I told you. Hands on the tummy, fill up the diaphragm. That's right. Now you must practice that. You don't have to shout, it's just a question of keeping it forward. Now, uh, try saying this, keeping it dead quiet, but right forward. Mm. How now, Mouse? No more nice ice or stew? How now, Mouse? No more nice ice or stew? What a damn silly question. Oh, never mind about that. You ought to be able to say it no louder than that, so they can hear it right back in the back row of the gallery. How now, Mouse? No more nice ice or stew. Oh, now, that's miles better. But uh, try not to fidget, darling. Hmm? A positive movement or stand still, but don't fidget. Well, of course, I've got a style of my own, you know. Yes, I know, darling, but we'll soon get over that. If we work at it. Now, I'd like to um, take the last sentence of the speech for tomorrow. Uh, let's see... Uh, Ah, here we are. Just the last line. Start at, it is not inconceivable. Shoulders back, darling. <coughs> you were going to have your hands on the dispatch box, ah. weren't you? Yes, that's right. Now, go ahead. It is not inconceivable that such a day may come. Till then, <coughs> we must stand firmly on the principles that we have enunciated. Sure that if we do so, Posterity, at least, will do us justice. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, it um, doesn't seem to mean much. Mean much? Doesn't mean anything. It's absolutely vital that it shouldn't mean anything. Well, then if it doesn't mean anything, it must have more, well, more emotion. Oh. You must be moved. Now, listen. It is not inconceivable that such a day... Oh, no, you can't possibly say that. How about... Uh, such a day may come, break. You're yearning for it, you see? Mm. Then, steadfastly, unshakably, till then we must stand firmly, and so on. Now, try it. Such a day may come? <laughs> You're not yearning quite enough, darling. Well, I can't yearn too much. After all, I'm only talking about a day when it'll be possible to import more jute. One, one really doesn't yearn for jute. Oh. Okay, then. But don't let it get too small. Till then, we must stand firmly on the principles that we have enunciated. 
Sure that if we do so, posterity at least? No, no, no. It's not posterity at least. It's posterity at least. Posterity at least will do us justice. Oh, now that's miles better. We'll run over the whole thing again tomorrow morning. Now then, the meeting. Uh, just give me the outline. Well, it's it's about the annual conference of the party. We are just going to have a preliminary quack about it. Well, who's coming? Lord President, Foreign Secretary, Chancellor, Party Chairman, First Lord. But the whole reptile house, in fact. Most of it. Well, what'll happen? The Lord President and the Foreign Secretary will both say they will only support my re-election as leader of the party as long as I do quite contradictory things. They will then quarrel. The First Lord will support the Foreign Secretary. The Chancellor will support the Lord President. They will then quarrel. The party chairman will then make an appeal for a united front and nobody will take any notice. And what will you be doing? I? Oh, just listening. Right. Key line number one. Gentlemen, I think we should get on more quickly if you were all to address your remarks to the chair. Got it? Mm, yes, I doubt if they take any notice, though. Well, then you must have, um, have a thing to tap with. Gentlemen, I think we should get on more quickly. You see, an oh. absolute ice. Mm. Now, key line number two. One at a time, please, gentlemen. Mr. Bunfrey, try it. One at a time. Tap, because they'll probably be making quite a shindy. One at a time, please, gentlemen. Mr. Bunfrey. Mm, well, not bad, but just a bit more refrigeration in your voice. Now then, key line... Three, cutting them short. Your line is, thank you, Sir Charles. I think the meeting now understands your point of view. Get it? Now, don't wait for a pause, just right across it. What do you mean, interrupt? Yes, bang, conclusive, resonance, oh, strong. Oh. Now try it. Uh, I'll be Sir Charles and you come in. Carrots, 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 carrots. Come on, carrots, 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 thank carrots, you, carrots, carrots. Thank you, Sir carrots, Charles. Carrots. Oh, no, no, darling, you're not really thanking him. Oh. It's irony. Go on. Uh, will you be, Sir Charles? <laughs> uh, carrots, carrots. No, no, uh, no, no, no. In a flood, quickly, loudly. Uh, carrots, 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 Thank carrots, you, carrots, Sir carrots, Charles. carrots, carrots, carrots. I think carrots, the meeting carrots, fully carrots, understands carrots. your point of view. Mm. You see, darling? Now, take your time. Resonant, head up. Thank you, Sir Charles. Fine. Oh, darling, that'll stop him in his tracks. Now, then, how does the whole thing begin? It's uh, here, isn't it? Yes. Well, here we are. I suppose it's half past. What happens? Well, how do you mean? They just all come in. Well, with you here? Yes. Oh, no. You let them assemble. You give them a moment or two. Then you make your entrance. Key line four. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Please take your places. Brisk, confident, quite friendly, but decisive. Now, go out and try your entrance. Mm. Carrots, 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 carrots. Right to entrance. Carrots, 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 carrots. Good carrots. afternoon, gentlemen. Please take your places. Oh, well, it's a bit stiff. You see, you're not a sentry. Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but it is frightfully important because it sets the whole tone. They've got to feel right from the outset that you are in command. Oh, Carol, my dear, don't you see? That's just the difficulty. I'm not in command. Well, why not? My personal following in the party is small. It's, it's a startling thought, but hundreds of delegates to the party conference really and honestly believe that the Lord President or the Foreign Secretary are great men. And I'm just a figurehead. I, I can't do without them, and they know it. And they can't do without you, and they know that. Oh, why not? James, there are times when I'd like to, to shake you. Don't you see that... You've got them absolutely cold. Well, they daren't let you go because they're so scared of one another. Key line number five. Gentlemen, there can be only one leader. Unless I am assured of your unconditional loyalty, I cannot continue. Try that. Then you'll see. Do you think it'd work? Well, I know it would. Then finish the whole thing quickly by saying, Gentlemen, I think that concludes our business. I wish you good afternoon. Mm. Got it? The Foreign Secretary and the First Lord have just arrived, Mr Rice. Right, uh, James, um, we'll go and leave Miss Parks to arrange things. Oh, oh y yes. Let the Prime Minister know when the meeting is assembled, will you, Miss Parks? Uh, yes, Mrs. Rice. Will you go in, please, gentlemen? Sir, I said, listen to me. I won't have it. I know what I want and I'm a plain man. 
I say what I think, and I... I Quite I... right. Now, what are we going to do about the conference? Are we going to throw him out? If he gives me the assurances I want, he can stay. No interference with the Foreign Office. No truck with Bulgaria. No messing with defense. No fooling over the Middle East. And no hanky-panky generally. Otherwise, out. Yeah. Well, of course, the Lord President... And no kowtowing to that. that. Ah, here we are. Morning, Bumphrey. Yes. Morning, Don yes. Well, I don't know. It's half past. He ought to be on parade. I don't care for being kept waiting. I always say, time's time. Very penetrating remark. Anyhow, Rice can't know that you're here, or he'd have been waiting to bow you in. Oh, I hope this is going to be a, uh, a friendly and cooperative meeting. It's rather important. And... Friendly? Cooperative? Of course it is, or I'll know the reason why. I'm a plain man, and I, 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 I... Good afternoon, gentlemen. Will you please take your places? You're late. I always say... He always says... Times, time. Even if it is, you don't have to keep on saying so. Some people need to be reminded. Gentlemen, I think we shall get on more quickly if you all address your remarks to the chair. I oh. beg your pardon? One at a time, please, gentlemen. Mr. Bumphrey? I said, what? Thank you, Sir Charles. I mean, Mr. Bumphrey. The meeting now fully understands your point of view. Now, about this conference... <clears throat> if I might put in a word, I hope this will be a friendly and cooperative meeting. The first thing that's going to come up at the conference is the question of the leadership of the party. And on that, I've got a few words to say. And I. One at a time, please, gentlemen. Mr. Bumphrey. I'm a plain man and I say what I think. And I tell you straight, I'm not satisfied with the way things have been handled. There's been too much interference. Too much flap doodle and shim -shab. Too much pandering to sectional interests. I don't know what the Foreign Secretary means by flapdoodle and uh, shim-sham, but I heartily agree that there has been too much pandering to sectional interests. I agree. And I agree. If I might put in a word, I do hope... Thank you, Mr. Jones Fullerton. Oh. I think the meeting fully understands your point of view. Let's get down to brass tacks. The man who's going to have my support for the leadership will be a man who accepts this program. One... No truck with Bulgaria. So far, he'll have my support, too. Two, no messing about in the Middle East. Action in the Middle East is essential. Three, proper support for the policy of the Foreign Office. Have you got one? No. How dare you say that to me? I won't have it. I, I, Gentlemen, I, 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 we shall get on more quickly if you address your remarks to the chair. One at a time, and the meeting fully understands your point of view. But, uh, but gentlemen, there can be only one leader. Eh? There can be only one leader. Unless I can be assured of your unconditional loyalty, I cannot continue. <laughs> then you'll be in the cart. Just what do you mean, Rice? You know perfectly well that I... I know that if you don't support me, Bumphrey here will be PM. And if he doesn't support me, you will. And if neither of you support me, it'll be a dogfight. The party will come in half and we shall spend five years in opposition. <laughs> If I might put in a word, that's what I meant about friendly cooperation. It really is important. Well, I you... never said I wouldn't support you, did I? Nor did I, as long as the... Very well. Now, let me tell you the terms on which I am prepared to be supported. One, decent departmental work. I'm far from satisfied with the admiralty, Sir Charles. Well, Who it... would be? It's a mess. Well, I am prepared to put it down to natural handicaps rather than sheer indolence. I'm... But I'm... there must be an improvement. Sure. <sighs> Two, less departmental squabbling and jockeying. Three, a coherent foreign policy. Here, 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 here. 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 Say that to me. I, I, Thank I, I, you, I, I, Mr. Bumphrey. The meeting fully appreciates your point of view. Oh. Four, the Lord President's office to be used to coordinate and not to run everybody else's department for it. Uh, yeah, 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 Do you yeah, suggest yeah. Five, I... less superciliousness and more efficiency at the Treasury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And six... Mm, I cannot for the moment remember six, <clears throat> but I'll let you have it in writing later. In the meantime, gentlemen, that concludes our business. I wish you good afternoon. Well, anyhow, Miss Wright, we, we put up a good fight in the by-election. A good fight, Miss Dramesbury? A seat lost which the party had held for over 30 years, and you talk about a good fight? Uh, well, of course, old Mr. Benson had held the seat so long that a lot of people just voted for him by habit. Uh, then when he died and we had to put up a new man, they sort of thought about it. And uh, w once you get a constituency thinking... Uh, lame, Mr. Amesbury. Very lame. There's no doubt that all this strong anti-government stuff in the Pine Press is having an effect. 
I fail to see that that is anything to do with the matter, Mr. Amesbury. Oh, come, Miss Rice. After all, this is a democracy. Once you really get across the newspaper proprietors, you're finished. Might as well quarrel with the brewers and have done with it. Mr. Amesbury, I must speak frankly. British democracy does not depend upon the conciliation of newspapers and brewers. I don't wish to see threats, Mr. Amesbury, but in my view, a head of the party office who speaks as you have spoken is fit only for a life peerage. <laughs> now, be reasonable, Miss Rice. Be fair. What, what with the polling day being wet and Beard having laryngitis all the last week and uh, new market races being on and, 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 and this and that, we, we didn't have a fair run. It wouldn't be justice to send a man to the House of Lords just for that. I was thinking less about the Tutbury result than your general tone of defeatism. Well, of course I'd, I... I didn't mean the country wasn't sound at heart. Oh, sound at heart. Well, uh, enthusiastic then... Uh, Keen, if you follow me. Uh, but uh, just a bit... Uh, just a bit... Well, they only want enthusing, as it were. Then I suggest that you should go away and make arrangements to enthuse forthwith. Good afternoon, Mr. Amesbury. Uh, quite. Uh, yes, uh, of course, it, 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 it's a little difficult to see what... Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, well, the, the miners and, and the farmers. Uh, yes, Mr. Amesbury? Uh, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Rice. Good afternoon, Miss Rice. Yes, Mr. Simmons. Anything important in the papers today? Practically all writing on the Tutbury results, Miss Rice. Terrific war dance in the opposition press, of course. I have spoken to Amesbury. The Prime Minister hasn't seen these. Uh, no, not yet. Oh, it's most unfortunate that this one's on the same page as the crossword puzzle. <laughs> If you give it to the Prime Minister like this, endless time will be wasted. Have it copied, Mr. Simmons. Uh, certainly, Miss Rice. Uh, the Prime Minister's going to the War Office? Uh, yes, Miss Rice. Let me know when he returns. Meanwhile, I'll take these newspapers. Bom, 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 bom. Typing pool, please. Until then, our policy in Central Europe must necessarily remain fluid. Yours sincerely. That's the lot, Miss Parks. Simmons? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I split an infinitive two days ago. Hansard has taken the whole sentence to pieces and put the infinitive together again. It looks awful. Get on to them and tell them that I won't have that sort of thing. I don't want people to think I'm the sort of man who's afraid to split an infinitive. Uh, certainly, sir. Yeah, right. Now, is there anything else, Miss Parks? There's just this matter of the Bulgarian ambassador. What? Still? It's a new one. They've recalled the old one, and now this one wants to see you. Out of the question, how can our policy in Central Europe remain fluid if I'm always giving these people interviews? Tell him to use the diplomatic channels. Where's my hat? I expect he wants to, to present his credentials. He hasn't even seen the Foreign Secretary yet. What he wants is a loan of £50 million without interest and the use of the Navy if he ever quarrels with anybody. Absurd. Tell him I'm out. Where is my hat? But he's taken to having a man in a telephone box across the street who gives him the tip when you come in. I think you'll have to see him sooner or later, or he'll start a new anti-British campaign in the Bulgarian press. They already call us thieves, liars and murderers every day. What else can they do? They might try to foment discontent in the Commonwealth. My dear Miss Parks, haven't you realised that there is nothing you can tell the members of the Commonwealth about this country which they don't tell themselves, each other and us every day of the week? Ah, here it is. <laughs> well, will you see him? Certainly not. The Foreign Secretary would never forgive me. Oh, well, we're supposing he won't go. Mm. The Ambassador, I mean. He's got an appointment. Then arrange for a telegram to be sent to him here in the most secret Bulgarian code we have in stock, telling him to go somewhere else and await instructions. You lack resource, Miss Parks. I'm afraid it'll be your downfall. Is Hebblewhite ready? Oh, I'm not sure if he's back from lunch yet. Well, if he isn't, tell him I've gone to the War Office. And see he doesn't wear that awful bowler hat. It makes me look ridiculous. Oh. Hello, Janice. Where's the old man going? War house? Uh, yes. Oh, is he going to see the Bulgarian ambassador? No. Well, he can't go on just not seeing the chap indefinitely. But if he starts talks with them, half the cabinet will resign and the party will just come in half. Oh, I, I suppose so. Is it true there's another dock strike? I haven't heard, but I don't see why not. Hello? Yes? Oh, he's here. Who? The ambassador. You go. Oh, all right. Mr. Simmons is coming. Give His Excellency a funny paper to look at and put me through to the Foreign Office, please, quickly. Uh, hello? This is the Prime Minister's personal private secretary. Will you please send a telegram at once in Bulgarian top-secret diplomatic code to the Bulgarian ambassador at number 10, instructing him to go somewhere else? What? Oh, anywhere, as long as the train service is pretty bad. No, 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 it, it must be in England or there'll be an awful mix-up. Yes. 
Thank you. Well, got rid of him? Won't go. Well, you've told him the old man's been called away. Yes, he says he rather expected that he might have been, so he's made no appointment for the next three days, so that he can wait. Oh, Roderick. Ah, I don't know what we're going to do. Miss Rye says it's absolutely essential that he shouldn't meet the Prime Minister. This is a really delightful surprise. Oh. Miss Parks, Count Whalem has called to see the Prime Minister by appointment and some ridiculous person oh. has left him outside completely alone in that freezing place with nothing but who was who in 1900. Now, please take it up with somebody. I don't know what you'll think of us, Rudolph, and I know James will be simply furious. Miss Parks, will you get somebody to bring in some tea? Uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, yes, Mrs. Rice. Uh, do you want anything, Mr. Simmons? Hmm? Uh, 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 no. Uh, 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 no. Mrs. Rice. How very odd you're turning up like this, Rudolph. And for me, how very delightful, Carol. Well, what are you doing now? Anything? Or are you still just a playboy? Well, in some ways, uh, still. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I am a sort of um, agent. An agent? Yes, between my country and England. Uh, import and export? Exactly, import and export. Oh, what of? Oh, uh, chiefly paper. Well, it's uncommonly nice to see you. To tell you the truth, I don't know many of James's people. And it's a change to meet an old friend. You are not interested in politics. Oh, I'm interested, but I don't know a thing about it. Do you? Oh, it is a subject that has always baffled me completely. Oh, what are you seeing James about? Uh, well, um, it has uh, long been my ambition to meet your famous husband, and... Uh, now, don't laugh at me, Carol, but I hope to get his autograph. His uh, autograph? Yes, I think that is what you call it. Just his name on a piece of paper. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he'll give it to you. Do you know, it's an odd thing, but people hardly ever ask for James's autograph. Uh, well, have you a big collection? Oh, I have at one time and another collected some very famous signatures. Oh, hello, Frida. May I present Count Rudolf Whalem, Miss Rice, my sister-in-law? How do you do? Rudolph's a very old friend of mine whom I haven't seen for years. Indeed, I didn't realise that. Rudolph's got an appointment with James, but nobody seems to know where James is. You don't know, do you? No, but I'm taking steps to find out. Oh, well, do stay and have a cup of tea with us. Except that nobody will bring us any tea. I ordered it a long time ago. I'm very honoured to meet you, Miss Rice. In my country, you know what they say of you, that you are the best political brain in Europe. I'm sorry to hear it. In my view... Women must at all costs avoid discussing political matters. Yes. Uh, well, luckily that's easy for me because I don't know anything about politics. Unfortunately, that's not always considered a reason for not discussing them. Yes. Uh, 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 where on earth is this tea? Oh, my dear Carol, forgive me, but it's most unlikely that Count Whalem can spare the time to stay and drink tea with you. We've already most unfortunately wasted his time. As the new Bulgarian ambassador, he must be very busy. As the... Uh, the what? The new Bulgarian ambassador. Oh, but Rudolph, you said you were an import and export. Well, Carol, you see, if people ask what you are doing, you can hardly say, I am an ambassador. It might be felt to be pompous. Oh, but what fun! <gasps> and how grand, Rudolph. <laughs> so that's why you're here. Oh, I thought that business about autographs sounded a bit odd. I say, Frida, if Rudolph's really somebody important, isn't it rather ridiculous that we can't find James? I mean, I didn't realise I was interfering. It was just that I knew James wouldn't like anybody just to be left in the waiting room. I agree that it is ridiculous. Uh, Miss Parks... Will you kindly ring round to everywhere the Prime Minister might be, or even could be, and point out that Count Whalem is still waiting for him here? You understand? Good. Have Whitehall patrolled. And, oh, you might try that tea shop round the corner. He may be having tea with Heppelwhite. Well, when did you take this job over, Rudolph? As soon as it became clear that upon the relations of Bulgaria and Great Britain hung the peace of Europe. You will remember the Danube negotiations. I'm quite sure Mrs. Rice won't remember them. I don't myself. One forgets these things. Rudolph, you've got awfully solemn. Oh, my dear Carol, the delicacy of the situation between our two countries. Oh. Is there a delicate situation? Certainly not. There is no situation between our countries, delicate or otherwise. 
I uh, beg your pardon, but a most urgent telegram has just arrived for Count Whelan. Oh. oh, thank you. Uh, uh, please read it, Count Whelan. Don't let our chatter interfere with urgent diplomatic business. Uh, thank you. Uh, then, if you will excuse me. Please, of course. <clears throat> uh, uh, thank you very much. There's no answer. But I'm sure we're keeping you from something important, aren't we, now? I'm afraid I don't know, but I doubt it. Don't know? The telegram is in one of our diplomatic codes, and I shall have to get it decoded at the embassy before I can read it. Have a car. Rush can't wait him to the Hungarian embassy at once, Mr. Simmons. Uh, yes, Mr. Oh, no, 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 no. Please don't bother. It's most unlikely to be of importance. We Bulgarians are an excitable people and send most urgent telegrams on the slightest provocation. You know, I'm getting very angry about this tea. I'll go and inquire about it. Well, why should you stay and talk to Count Whalem, and I'll go? No, no, I should much prefer to... Yes, madam. Oh, well, now, neither of us need. Marshal, I tried to order tea about half an hour ago. Get it at once, will you? Certainly, madam. You know, I'm perfectly certain he didn't hear what you said. He's practically stone deaf. I I'll just go. Uh, 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 come, uh, Mr. Simmons. Uh, yes, Miss Rice. Now, what on earth? Well, you must think this is an efficient place, Rudolph. Up at cutting appointments and losing James, not even being able to produce a cup of tea. Oh, my dear Carol, as though tea mattered beside the pleasure of just being here. Oh, well, excuse me. Uh, perhaps they found James. Hello? Oh, hello, Frida. Oh. Oh. Yes. Uh, well, I'd better, hadn't I? Uh, all right. Uh, that was Frida. Uh, she says that, uh, that Marshall didn't hear what I said and that he's, he's taken the tea down there. I mean, downstairs. So perhaps if you don't mind, we'd better go and, uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, find it. You don't mind, do you? No, of course not. Except that if the Prime Minister were to return, I shouldn't like to miss... Oh, no, 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 I don't think there's the slightest chance of that. I mean, he won't be returning now, or probably not tonight at all, really. Um, uh, come along, please. Uh, Frida says there are ice buns. The tea, oh. madam. But here, after all, is the tea. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, that's another lot. Come on. Thank you, madam. I, am. Um... I think this must be ours, Carol, because here are the iced buns. Now, look, Rudolph, you've got to go. You see? But why? You know why. It was a cad's trick not to tell me. Tell you? What should I tell you? Your husband makes an appointment with me and breaks it. You come along and invite me to have tea with you while I wait. I accept. Now, what is wrong with that? Well, you knew quite well that I was dropping a brick. Oh, now, please, there's a dear. So... You turn me out, huh? You realize that I am the ambassador of a friendly power? What will my government say when I report this, huh? It will mean war... Oh, stop playing the fool. Oh, look, Rudolph, we've always been good friends. You... Now, you don't want to ruin everything for me, do you? Uh, strictly speaking, there is no friendship in diplomacy. But um, if I were to go, I should, of course, expect, um, well, certain concessions. Um, what concessions? Perhaps that you should say, nice, Rudolph. Kind, Rudolph. You get me out of a jam, I'm grateful. I kiss you. Oh, all right, but quickly. No, 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 Carol, not quickly. Slowly. There, now, come on. Oh, that was a very little kiss, Carol. Darling, it's nothing to what I'd give you if I had a pickaxe. Come on, you scum. I don't quite see what you're proposing, Bumfrey. I'm not proposing anything. I'm merely saying that I won't be a party to any discussions since loading any treaty with people like that. Ah, tea. Good. It's the first time I've ever known anybody in this place see what was wanted without being told. As it comes? Thank you, I won't. Oh, what, not even a bun? Mmm. Oh, good buns. What? Now, what you say is all very well, but it puts me in an awkward position, you know. I mean, one can't go on refusing to talk to people, not unless we break off diplomatic relations. Is that what you want? What I want is less shim-sham and fiddle-faddle. Oh, yes, but just not having shim-sham and fiddle-faddle is a, a bit negative, isn't it? Are you implying that my policy is negative? No, 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 no. It isn't positive enough to be negative. 
Well, if you follow me. Yeah. No, hello, Frida. Look, um, Bunfrey's just saying... Where have you been? Been? Haven't been anywhere. Well, but you've been combing London for you. Why? Uh, well, nothing. The, the matter's been dealt with now, as it happens, luckily. What's been up? Uh, nothing of importance. You were saying that Mr. Bunfrey felt... Uh, well, he feels pretty strongly about this Bulgarian business. And so do I. I'm glad to hear that. What's wanted here is furnace. We must be prepared to say no. But you can't go on just saying no, whatever people say. No, no, I'll get your hat for you. No, please, please, Carol, allow me. Oh, at last. James, may I introduce Count Rudolf Whalem, the new Bulgarian ambassador, who has been waiting here with inescapable patience to see you all the afternoon. We tried to contact you but failed. Well, well. This is a pleasure, Count Whalem. One Prime Minister which has been delayed too long. Uh, you know Mr. Bumphrey, eh? Good afternoon. <laughs> yes, we have met in various parts of the world, uh, though never before in London. I didn't realize, James, when I was, was brought here that I was to have this pleasure. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, uh, neither did I. <laughs> it's a small world, isn't it? Mm. I mean the way one bumps into people. It's not a big enough drop. If I threw myself out of this window, I should probably just sprain my ankle or something. I know I shall have to shoot myself. Have you got a gun? No. No, there are never any props in this place. It was his having an appointment that foxed me. I thought James had just forgotten. Do you think the Prime Minister leaves ambassadors in specially unheated rooms by accident? Well, he might. He leaves things all over the place. He left a dispatch box in my bath yesterday. Anyhow, how was I to know he was an ambassador? Last time I saw him, he was just a boy who tangoed rather well and had a very big car. Nobody ever told me the position over Bulgaria. My dear girl, how many times must I explain that there is no position over Bulgaria? Once we start admitting that there is a position, we are pledged by the most solemn obligations to do something about it. The whole political structure can only be preserved in a position of this kind by taking up the position that no position exists. Then why didn't someone say so? It's the sort of thing that one senses by means of, of, of one's political antennae, so to speak. Frida, you'll have to know sooner or later, I haven't any political antennae. They got cut off when I was a baby. Well... What happens now? Since the Foreign Secretary stayed only ten minutes and then left banging the door behind him, I should think he will resign. Apart from that, I... Oh, hello. Well, how did it go, James? Oh, not too badly. Nice young man. Able, too. Able? He's as able as a rattlesnake. Look what I've been sent. Electric razor. Who gave you that? The people who make them. They say it's a mark of esteem. <laughs> it's just advertising, really. Bumfrey didn't stay long. Billy? Oh, no, he was very peevish. Removal of the collar is unnecessary. Will Bumphrey resign? I don't know. <laughs> he, he was very peevish. Marvellous thing, really. He's got a little motor inside that buzzes to and fro. At right angles to the skin surface. Is this at right angles to the skin surface? What chance hmm? is there of talking him round? Or I hope, I should say. You see, this man Whalem suggested that I should pay a personal visit to Bulgaria. What? And I said I thought that was quite an idea. That was when Billy blew up. Good heavens. Wait a minute. You agreed to visit Bulgaria? No, 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 nothing like that. I just said it was worth thinking about. It is, too. You think about it. I see what you mean, but... Are we on AC or DC? AC. Frida, ah. does this mean there's going to be a position over Bulgaria now? So you're going right out for a rapprochement with Bulgaria? Uh, that's the sort of thing. My hat. What? I don't believe there's a plug in the bathroom. Yeah, but that's the whole point. You don't have to shave in the bathroom. You can mm. shave anywhere where there's a plug. At, at my desk, eh? Oh, or, or, or at meetings. <laughs> or at... James. I beg your pardon, my dear. Yes, you were saying? I think what you've done may be a stroke of political genius. Oh, thank you, Frida. Yes, anyhow, it will certainly have to be represented as one. So we may as well get used to the idea. Now, let me see what will happen. Uh, Bumphrey won't resign. Good heavens, no, Bumphrey never resigns. If you want to get rid of him, the only way is for everybody else to resign and go and form up again in another place without him. But he'll make the First Lord do so. That'll be it. Oh, no. Then you'd better get on and draft your reply to his resignation. Uh, 
time do the public houses open? Half past five. Oh, but there are heaps of places I know where you can get a drink any time. Uh, now, you misunderstood me. Uh. I was wondering whether it was any use ringing up the head of the party office. Uh, the reply to the First Lord's resignation, James. I'll send Miss Parks in. Nice young man, that Rudolph. Abel, I should say. Oh, don't, darling, I can't bear it. Yes, Prime Minister. Ah, Miss Parks, the First Lord may be resigning. We shall have to get out some sort of reply. Uh, remember that for this purpose, I address him as Dear Charles. Uh, apart from that... Uh, any ideas? Uh, dear Charles... I have your letter and note that you do not feel mm. able to continue as a member of the government. Mm, excellent. Uh, do you want to thank him for his invaluable services? It's usual. I do not. There are limits to hypocrisy, even in politics. Is there any official way of saying cheers? In the circumstances, whatever my personal feelings, mm -hmm. I am bound to accept your decision as right mm -hmm. and inevitable and to accept your resignation, your sincerely. Splendid. Get that typed. Don't actually send it, just in case. He may be yours truly. Do you want to be his sincerely if he's yours truly? Oh, yes, yes. I think we can afford that. We don't want to be small, Miss Park. Oh, very well, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, James. Y yes, my dear? I'm desperately sorry. Don't worry, my dear. After all, we now have a, a policy about Bulgaria, which we badly needed. Oh, now, they'll, they'll all gang up against you. And just when you'd got them where you wanted them. What'll happen? Trouble at the party conference? Mm, no, no, too far ahead. No, no. No, let me see. Uh, well, just, just guessing. The First Lord will resign as a gesture. The opposition will table a vote of censure. The Foreign Secretary, the Lord President, will pointedly not speak in the debate and will instruct enough of their followers to abstain, either to defeat the government or to give us a tiny majority. It depends whether they want a general election or not. In all of this, of course, they will be ably assisted by your friend Lord Pine. But in any case, you... You'll be sunk. Mm, possibly, if it comes off. But uh, if you get a combination like Pine, Bumphrey and the Lord President, there's always the hope of uh, woof, spontaneous combustion. Surely we can square them. I mean to say, well, Boodle, Pine, he'd sell his own grandmother. Oh, my dear, you can't buy men like Pine. Well, maybe not, but we might be able to rent him for the summer. <laughs> no, Carol, never fight a man with his own weapons. Why not? Because it's very improbable you'll handle them as well as he does. He's had more practice. Supposing I were to go along and see Pine? My dear Carol, I may have sunk low, but I will not have my wife having anything to do with that man. <laughs> oh, let them do their worst. <laughs> let the confused clamor of conflicting and irreconcilable policies stand condemned by its own futility. Let's see what that sounds like. Awful. Oh. <laughs> yes, madam? Oh, Marshal, will you make me some sort of long, cold drink? Preferably hemlock, if we've got any. I'm afraid not, madam. Perhaps, um, a gin sling. Well, that'll do. Certainly, madam. Well, Marshal... It looks rather as though you'll have a new employer soon. So I understand, madam. It must be rather odd to be a sort of permanent official in a changing world. Uh, one becomes used to it, madam. Yes, I suppose so. Well, I hope you like the new setup. I uh, could not hope to get a better master than Mr. Rice, madam, but my previous experience of Mr. Percival suggests that he is a very uh, nice, Gentlemen, you won't mind. I shall trust that the change will be only temporary, madam. Your drink. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Rice. Uh, all right, Marshal. Thank you, madam. It's all fixed then. Yes, Mrs. Rice. Thursday. Chances? Well, uh, well, they'll carry the vote of censure. They may, but even if they don't, it'll be so close that well, we can hardly carry on. Then what? Well, I imagine the PM will resign at once. I see. Does it mean that you'll lose your job? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right, really. Oh, but at least I'm glad to find there's someone else to whom the whole thing means something. Oh, Lord, yes, Mrs. Rice. 
matter of fact, it means an awful lot to me. But you don't seem very worried about it. Worried? It's the best thing that's happened for months. What? You don't mind losing your job? Well, well yes, of course, in a way. Uh, but you see, Janet, uh, you know, Miss Parks, well, well, we've wanted to get married for a long time, and, uh, well, at least I have, and, and, and she never would because she was too busy. Uh, and, and now, well, she won't be busy. You're going to marry Miss Parks? Yes. Oh. Oh, congratulations. Uh, then, of course, you, you won't mind. You'll be glad. In a way. No, uh, only in a way, of course. I, I mean, I'm frightfully sorry, too. From the point of view of the country, it's a tragedy, of course. Right. Oh, it seems so... It seems so ridiculous to be beaten by that lot. Yes, particularly as all our people really hate one another like poison. You wanted to square them, didn't you? Well, some of them. I don't think it would have been difficult to split the gang if we talked to them separately. Separately? Mr. Simmons, are you prepared to do something drastic to save the situation? Well, of course, Mrs. Rice. Well, including risking your job? Well, unless something's done, I shan't have a job anyhow. Good. And Miss Parks? She'll do anything as long as it's for the PM. Right. Then, will you and Miss Parks make some appointments for the Prime Minister here on Wednesday evening? Wednesday evening? Well, you know he'll be in Paris. Well, never mind about that. Get the Lord President and the Foreign Secretary on the telephone and arrange for them to come on Wednesday night. Together? Oh, good heavens, no. At intervals. Will you do that? Very well, Mrs. Rice. Oh, and while we're about it, we might just as well have Lord Pine, too. <laughs> Dear Boodles. If you would take a seat, Lord Pine. No, right. Uh, you might ask the Prime Minister not to be any longer than he need. I'm rather busy. Very well, Your Lordship. <laughs> oh. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Rice. Why, Boodles. Oh, uh, hello, Carol. Oh, how odd to meet you like this. It's such years since, uh, well, since I've seen you. Yes. There's a good deal of water's gone under the bridge since then, hasn't it? <laughs> Done pretty well for yourself, haven't you? Yes, I suppose so. Though I've always had some good chances, you know. If you're trying to remind me that I was one of them, don't bother. I've got a good memory. Oh, poor Boodles. You were furious, weren't you? Well, I came to see your husband. He is coming, I suppose. Well, that's really why I came in. They told me you were here, and I thought I must come in and say hello. Oh, nice of you. Yes, and to apologise for James. Apologise for him? Yes, well, he's had to rush off somewhere. You mean he's cut my appointment after bringing me here at his suggestion? Oh, I'm so sorry. Who does he think he is? Oh, now, don't be angry, please. It's not his fault. You see, apparently everything's in an awful mess since the First Lord resigned. Mess? There's nothing to the mess it's going to be in. Mm, so I understand. What do you mean? Well, I don't know that I ought to talk to you, really. You've, um... You see, you've been on the other side, haven't you, Boodle? If you want to know, I'm on the point of putting this government out of office. What, all by yourself? Oh, Boodle. Well, it's no good old boodlesing me, my girl. Rice and I are in a dogfight, and I'm going to win. And if he sent you to try and gill gilly me out of it, you're wasting your time. But sent me? Oh, <laughs> oh, you can't know James very well, or you wouldn't say that. Why do you want to turn him out, Boodle? If you know anything about the political situation, you know the answer to that. And if you don't, I'm not going to waste time explaining it to you. Oh, all right. I only ask because... Uh, well, because... Uh, because uh, what? Because I happen to know that he admires you a lot. Bunk. Oh, but I tell you, he does. Well, now, if he didn't admire you, would he have been going to... Uh, to... Uh... Uh, to... Uh, go going to what? Oh, Nothing. Goodbye. I apologise for James. <coughs> oh, I can't say I'm sorry he wasn't here on the whole. What are you getting oh, at? Never mind. Uh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, Carol. You know I'm a blunt man. Yes. You don't know what he wanted from me? What wanted from you? The boot was on the other foot. Hey! Just what is this? I don't know anything about it. It's nothing to do with me. Goodbye. Oh, wait, Carol. I, uh, I want to know what you're talking about. Do you mean Rice was going to make I me an offer? I don't know anything about Oh, yes, you do. He was going to make me an offer, wasn't he? I don't know. Yes, you do. What was it? Out with it. Now, I won't tell you. Why should I? You can't make me. Not even if it means saving him from being smashed. Listen, unless something very funny happens, he'll be out of office in 24 hours. If you know anything that's likely to make me alter my mind, say it, and say it quick. Well, I'd rather he was out of office than be in it with men like, like you. It was... 
You mean he, he was going to offer? Well, he's had one bounder in the job. I don't want him to have another. You'd rat two. In the and... job? You, you, you mean he was going to offer me the, the Admiralty? I tell you, I don't know anything about it. I didn't say it. I... Oh, well, what does it matter anyhow? You're going to smash him. He won't have any jobs to offer anybody. Where is he, girl? I've got to see him. I must see him. Where is he? <laughs> That'll give him Dick Whittington. Lord Pine has left, Mrs. Rice. Good. Yes. He seemed to be in a frightful hurry. Excellent. I look forward to tomorrow's clarion. You know, I needed him to play myself in for the other two. My timing's all over the place. It's lack of practice. The Lord President has just come. He has an appointment with the Prime Minister. Good. Show him in, will you, Miss Parks? If you will take a seat, Mr. Doran Champney, the Prime Minister. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Rice. Good evening. You're Mr. Downs Champney, aren't you? I am. Well, I don't think we've met, but I've seen you lots of times. I've heard a lot about you, of course. <laughs> Always a frightening thing to be told. And though, of course, in many ways, this is bound to be a sad thing for me, I'm very glad it should be you, well, rather than anyone else. That's uh, very kind of you. Oh, not that there could be any doubt about it, really, of course. James said at once, the Lord President is the only possible man. Uh, yes. Uh, of course, much as I regret it, there have been times in the past when we haven't seen eye to eye. Oh, never mind the past. I know you've squabbled quite a lot, but that's all over now. Anyhow, James would never let a thing like that stand in the way of the country's interests. I mean, one mustn't be personal about these things, must one? Certainly not. The country's interests must come first. And, of course, having led the House of Commons, it will be a help, won't it? Uh, well, all experience is useful. Quite. I mean, some people said it ought to be the Foreign Secretary, oh, but he's such a fathead. Well, at least James always says so. Oh, I say, I'm not being frightfully indiscreet, am I? I mean, you won't tell the Foreign Secretary that I said James said he was a fathead. I shall naturally regard anything you say as entirely confidential. Oh, fine. Because between ourselves, I think the Foreign Secretary is going to be absolutely furious when he hears... And really, when you come to think of it, it's awfully like when Bonner Law retired, isn't it? Lord Curzon thinking he was going to get the job, poor dear, then Mr. Baldwin getting it. Although, of course, James isn't actually dying. But otherwise, it's very like, isn't it? Mrs. Rice, uh, is, uh, is the Prime Minister's health... Uh... Uh, he didn't tell you what the doctor said? Oh, well, it's all right. I mean, as long as he has a complete rest. But they were very firm about it. I see. Will it seem odd living here? Oh, it's a madly inconvenient house, of course. I, I must confess that it seems a trifle strange at the moment. I suppose there's no difficulty about being a lord, is there? Mm? Oh, no, no, of course I was forgetting. The Lord President isn't really a lord, is he? I mean, it's like the Lord Privy Seals, not a lord or a privy or a seal. I sit in the House of Commons. Yes, of course. Oh, James is a long time. Where has he gone? I'm afraid I've no idea. But didn't he say when he'd be back? Well, no. You see, he hasn't actually come yet. What do you mean? I haven't seen the Prime Minister. Oh, what? I'm sorry, Mrs. Rice, but I think you were under the impression that my interview with your husband had already taken place. Actually... You mean to say he hasn't told you? I haven't seen him. What have I done? I've been saying all sorts of things. I thought you knew. Please don't distress yourself, Mrs. Rice. I distress myself, but I've given the whole show away. I may have done something awful. On the contrary, Mrs. Rice, on the contrary, I assure you. How do you mean? Uh, because though you won't know it, of course, I was on the point of taking steps which could hardly have failed to, well, be embarrassing to your husband. But why? Oh, it would take too long to explain to you, dear lady. Uh, but, of course, if, as I gather from what you told me, our leader for reasons of health was on the point of appealing to me to undertake a greater national task, that alters matters. You mean you wouldn't do it? I should probably have to reconsider the whole situation. If I felt that the national interest would be best served by leading the government myself instead of destroying it, then, of course, the national interest, as it ever has been, would be my first consideration. Oh, now, that's what James always says, that you're a true that, my dear Mrs. Rice, my worst enemy could hardly deny. Well, 
I don't know. I feel I may have done something awful. Don't worry, dear lady. You have done the very best possible thing. Accidentally, perhaps, but nevertheless effectively. As long as I can see the Prime Minister at once... Oh, but, 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 you see, I don't know where he is. I thought he was here. Well, he must have been called away or something. Uh, possibly. Perhaps I had better inquire. If they'd know outside. Of course. Uh, forgive me if I hurry away. You'll realise the urgency. Oh, yes, yes, of course. A most fortunate encounter, Mrs. Rice. How fortunate? I doubt if you fully understand. Goodbye, dear lady. <laughs> Good. Bye. The Lord President has now left, Mrs. Rice. Good. Now, the only thing is to make sure that he doesn't see the Prime Minister before tomorrow night. I doubt if he will. The Prime Minister won't be back until just in time for the censure motion. Excellent. I take it that when the Foreign Secretary arrives, you wish him to be shown. Yes, please. Uh, Mrs. Rice, yes? if you should be uh, talking to the Foreign Secretary, he doesn't understand things unless they're put very simply. Well, he can't be much slower than the Lord President. I thought I should never get it into his head. <laughs> The Foreign Secretary is here, Mrs. Rice. He has an appointment with the Prime Minister. Oh, show him in, Miss Park. If you would just take a seat, Mr. Bumphrey. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, you're Mr. Bumphrey, aren't you? That's it, Mrs. Rice. Well, I don't think we've actually met, but I've heard so much about you. And none of it to my credit, eh? <laughs> I don't know about that. But I would like to say that, though, of course, in many ways, this is bound to be a sad thing for me. I'm very glad it should be you, rather than anyone else. Uh, well, that's uh, very kind of you. Not that there could be any doubt about it, really, of course. James said at once, the foreign secretary is the only possible man. Fine. No idea, old boy. I suppose they must have seen the light or something. Sure. Cheerio. Perfectly true, Miss Rice. Government majority of 104. Nonsense. Honestly, the PM only spoke for five minutes. The whole thing simply fizzled out. But yesterday the whips were saying that if we had a majority at all, it wouldn't be more than ten. Well, of course, the Lord President and the Foreign Secretary were extremely uh, convincing uh, in their different ways. The Foreign Secretary was in tears at the end of his speech. Oh, he always is. What I want to know is why the whole lot of them have come over in a body like this. Mm. I've been 40 years in politics, and I've never before known a vote of censure turn into an illuminated address. Ah, here you are, James. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Simmons. James, what on earth has happened? Why? What's the matter, Frida? Aren't you pleased? Well, naturally, I'm pleased. The motion doesn't seem to have been uh, pressed, sir. Pressed? Well, most extraordinary thing I've seen in my life. The Lord President called me a great statesman. He must have gone mad. And the Foreign Secretary said I was the greatest force for peace this country had ever had. Drunk as usual, one can only imagine. But still, why, James? Well, dear, why? I have no idea. They may have felt a little conscience-stricken about having engineered this, of course. Oh, rubbish. Even if either of them has a conscience of which there's not the slightest proof, it certainly wouldn't make them talk that sort of fulsome nonsense. Perhaps um, the leader in the clarion impressed them. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Of course, the pine press had swung over most violently this morning. And... <laughs> in fact, there's been a general atmosphere of, of appreciation today, which is quite extraordinary. Appreciation, my foot. There's been a general atmosphere of political chicanery that you could cut with a knife... The only question is who bribed who with what and why. I beg your pardon, Mr. Rice, but Lord Pine, the Lord President and the Foreign Secretary have called. Hmm? They say they wish to see you urgently. Oh? Uh, have they uh, called uh, together hmm? in a body, so to speak? Well, uh, yes. Yes, you'd better see them. Then perhaps we shall know what all this is about. Uh, they uh, probably want to uh, offer their uh, congratulations, sir. Possibly. Well, 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 so much the better. I, I'd like to be on good terms with everyone. Quite. But if they've come to be rewarded for their support, remember that there's nothing owing. You think... My dear James, they've obviously come for practical results of calling you a great statesman. Yes. Ah. Uh, uh, show them in, <coughs> Miss Parks. Very well, Mr. Rice. If you'll take my advice, James, your general line should roughly be that of a man dealing with the friendly advances of a boa constrictor. Gratified, but wary. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, good evening. You hear him? He is so lost to every feeling of decency and honor that he can stand there and... The game's up, Rice. 
We three have talked to one another. You dirty double-crossing swine. I beg your pardon. You think you've been very clever, don't you? Well, let me tell you, this is the end of you. You may have thought you would play hooky with us. Cheat, liar. You keep your mouth shut, Bumpley. I've as much right to call him a liar as you have. I'm a plain man. Yeah, gentlemen, gentlemen, do, do you mind telling me what you're all talking about? My God. God. One at a time, please, gentlemen. Mr. Bumpley. Yes, I'll tell you. We're talking about that low-down, mean, deceitful... Don't you try to bully me, Pine. Well, then stop it. Uh, gentlemen, I gentlemen, you. we shall get on more quickly if you address your remarks to the uh, uh, chair. So far, I haven't the faintest idea what you have come for. Some, indeed all of you, have spoken of me today in appreciative terms. Terms which I must confess surprise me, but even so, I surprise cannot... Surprise! The depths of hypocrisy to which you sink, Rice. Well, wait a minute. Now, look here, Rice. I'm going to ask you a question, and the answer had better be the truth. Did you put that girl up to this? Obviously. Oh, of course he did. What girl up to what? Oh. Did you arrange with that woman, Carol, to spin us that yarn? Are you referring to my wife, Pine? Yes, I am. Then refer to her in a decent way, or I'll throw you downstairs. No, 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 never mind that. Blah, wriggling. I haven't the least idea what you mean. I think you must all have taken leave of your senses. Oh, do you? Well, then, let me tell you that your wife told each one of us separately that... that mm -hmm. Huh? The, well? That you were ill and retiring and about to call on me. That in the national interest, I was to take over from you. That you were giving me the admiralty. What? You say you didn't arrange it? You're talking nonsense. Nonsense? Why else in heaven's name should we have kept you in office? We had you cold. But this, this dirty trick. But there, there must be some misunderstanding. I assure you, my wife would never... Oh, wouldn't she? Well, then, have her in and ask her. That's right. Let me talk to her. I insist Be on... Be quiet. quiet. Really? Now, perhaps you see why we're just a trifle annoyed with you, Rice. And also why you'd better do something about it. Quick. If there were a word of truth in it, which, of course, there isn't... I tell you... I what? could understand your um, annoyance. But in any case, I am not prepared to uh, take any action. No, so you will just let yourself be smashed. Smash? Do you think your reputation would stand this coming out? You'd be finished in the interests of public decency. I'm afraid I hadn't thought about the effect on my reputation. You see, it's all, it's all new to me. But whether my reputation survived or not, it seems to, it seems to destroy yours. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Oh, oh come, gentlemen. What you are saying is that the prospect of a new and higher office, which you claim to have had uh, suggested to you, changed me, in your view, from a national disaster into a great statesman. Well, if you feel that in the interests of public decency, that should be made public, I could hardly stand in your way. The electorate would be interested and uh, no doubt sympathetic, as indeed I am. You, 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 you old... Oh, oh, but I assure you I am deeply sympathetic. I hate to see three public-spirited men uh, misled. In fact, if it were not that the position of First Lord has now been filled and that I am in good health, I should feel almost compelled. No, it's an outrage. I have given my life to the service of the nation, and I, I, I... You? I... Why, if you hadn't the biggest swollen head in the country, you'd have known he must be foxing to offer you... Gentlemen, the... I have offered none of you anything. If you have supported me through a misunderstanding, it is up to you to correct and explain that misunderstanding or not, as you choose. I decline to have anything more to do with the matter. Good day. You'll pay for this, Rice. I insist on seeing your wife. And I... My wife knows nothing of political matters. If you have attempted to make capital out of anything which you may have wormed out of her, you have only yourselves to blame. Wormed out of her? Why, she trotted it all out. Show yes, these gentlemen out, Simmons. Very what? Good, oh. good evening, gentlemen. Oh, this way, please, gentlemen. Never been so disgracefully way, treated in my life. You'll pay for this. I shall make it my business to expose you in the public interest. I shall look forward to it. Good evening. Simmons. I think those three must have experienced a mass hallucination. I understand that mass hallucinations are much more common than is generally supposed. Yes. Unless, unless, Simmons, they have been deliberately misled by somebody. That uh, is always possible, of course. You have no reason to think that deliberate falsehoods have been um, circulated by anyone here? 
Well, of course, it's my job to deal with the press. Oh, quite. But apart from that, have any of them been here before lately? I, uh, <coughs> believe they called yesterday. And who saw them? Uh, well, they all wanted to see you. I think uh, Mrs. Rice uh, uh, chattered to them. Ah, I see. They, they, they might possibly have got a wrong impression from something Mrs. Rice may have let fall. Yes. <sighs> you know, I, I was afraid that the Lord President didn't really think I was a great statesman, but it's a little disappointing all the same. I, <clears throat> I think perhaps I should speak to Mrs. Rice, Simmons. I rather think Mrs. Rice is out. Ah, yes. Very likely. Well, never mind. It'll do later. Thank you, Simmons. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Rice. <laughs> Hello, James. Oh, ah. Carol, come in. I, I want to speak to you. Carol. A most extraordinary thing has happened. Lord Pine, the Lord President, and the Foreign Secretary, political opponents of mine, but nevertheless, Carol, men who have given a great deal of service to the state, have been here. It appears that somebody had misled them into thinking that they were to be given office in the government or to take over the premiership. Oh. Moreover. Oh, Carol. If they hadn't been such crooks, they wouldn't have fallen for it. Perhaps not. But you see, dear, it puts me in a very difficult position. That just leaves you as prime minister. Yes, but can I carry on after this? After all, one has certain standards. Oh, now, don't be silly. What standards have they got? No, I wasn't thinking of them. Then what standards has anyone got in this game? They didn't care. Not one of them. Who? Well, all of them. Simmons and Miss Parks and Marshall and Frieda. Well, they're just thinking about themselves. Oh, except Frieda, and she's thinking about the beastly party. Isn't that fairly natural, my dear? Oh, I suppose so. But they might have given a thought to... Oh, to something else. Oh, you mean the, uh, <clears throat> the national interest? Well, of course, the removal of the hand of the present government from the helm at this critical juncture from the point of view of the national oh, interest... Oh, to hell with the national interest. Really? Look, I, read, I don't care about anyone's interest but yours. When you worked for them, wanted for them, done your best to keep them from making fools of themselves, and they were going to throw you off like an old shoe. And, oh, and, and break your heart. Break? My... <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> oh, now, James, stop it. Stop it or I'll hit you with something. What's funny? But, my dear girl, consider... Tonight I am Prime Minister. Upon my shoulders rests the weight of 20 problems, every one of which, by definition, is quite insoluble. For three years I've been working with the aid of a very ordinary brain to deal with a situation which would have baffled Solomon, offsetting as best as I can the disastrous efforts of my colleagues and getting what little help I can from the stupidity of the opposition. But sometime soon I shall hand over to Percival. And then... Why, if there's a crisis in Bulgaria or Uruguay is in liquidation or housing is inadequate or agriculture is an extremist, that'll be his business. But there'll be nothing for me to worry about. I shall be in the opposition and the trout will still be in the test. <laughs> Don't you see? See? Well, of course I see. I've always seen. How was I to know that you saw? Because you never told me. You and Frieda and Simmons and all of you. You let me think it really mattered. <laughs> that it was your life. Why didn't you tell me it was only a silly game? My dear, I'm sorry, but the honesty, it never occurred to me that there was anyone left who took us so seriously. Well, Miss Parks? I, I beg your pardon, Mr. Rice, but Lord Pine, the Lord President and the Foreign Secretary are fighting. Fighting? Uh, yes. Lord Pine seems to be throttling the Lord President and the Foreign Secretary has Lord Pine by the hair. Shall I send for the police? The police? Oh, yes. yes. Uh, uh, do they appear to be hurting one another? Well, yes, Mr. Rice, rather. Ah, well, uh, send for the police in a minute or two. And Miss Parks? Uh, yes? Don't rush it. There's no hurry. No hurry at all.
In The Leader of the House by Nigel Balchin, Michael Horden played the part of James Rice, the Prime Minister, and Coral Brown, that of Carol Lindsay, his wife. The part of Frida Rice was played by Margot Boyd. The Lord President of the Council by Simon Lack. Mr. Bumphrey, the Foreign Secretary, Felix Felton. Roderick Simmons, Peter Tudnam. Janet Parks, Sonia Fraser. Mr. Amesbury, Lockwood West. Lord Pine, Rolf Lefebvre. Count Rudolph de Whalem, Andrew Sachs. The First Lord, Geoffrey Winkert. The party chairman, John Brining, the chancellor of the exchequer, Gerald Cross, and Marshal the butler, Clifford Norgate. The play was produced by John Tideman.